I want to give a huge shout out to today's sponsor, MailTag. MailTag is a Chrome extension that allows you to track your emails in real time for free. It also lets you track other cool things like link clicks, email reopens, and even the device that was used to open your emails. Be sure to check out MailTag by clicking the link in the description below. Hey guys, in this video we're going to talk about something that is very real and can be pretty serious for programmers and developers, and that's burning out. So this is something that I've had experience with myself and I'd like to try and help some people out. So the main things I want to address is what burnout is, what causes it, what can prevent it, and then ways to try to get out of it if you're already burnt out. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, so I guess it would make sense to first go over what programmer burnout or developer burnout actually is and what some of the symptoms are. Now, it's important to note that you may get some of, all of, or none of these symptoms. It manifests itself in different ways for different people, and that's something that's really important to remember. You may have two developers that are both burnt out but have, are having completely different experiences. Now, everything that I'm going to say in this video is from both my, my own personal experience and doing research on the subject. All right, so a serious lack of motivation and passion is probably the most common um, and probably the, the first sign. Chances are you got into programming and, and development because you really enjoy it and you have a passion for it. If you start feeling that passion going away, then that can be a sign that you might start, you might, uh, start beginning to burn out. Now, if you have feelings of dread every time you open your text editor or your IDE, then chances are you're already there or you're just about there. And to be clear, I don't mean if this happens one or two days where you're just not feeling into it. Uh, I'm talking about if this is happening every day for weeks or months or even years. All right, another sign of burnout is feeling fatigued mentally and physically. If you have no energy or drive to code or even do other things in your life, then you may be burning out. All right, also feelings of isolation. Now, programming is, well, I shouldn't say is, but can be a very lonely career. Now, I know a lot of people work in teams, but even then, you usually have meetings, you'll discuss your project, create some wireframes or whatever, and then you'll retreat to your computer by yourself. So, uh, you know, maybe in some situations, in some jobs, people do actually code together, but I know for me, I can't, I can't talk to someone while I'm programming at the same time. Uh, not only is it difficult, but it's just very annoying. So naturally you're going to feel a little isolated depending on who you are. All right. Now this can contribute a lot or a little to burnout. I know that for me, I actually like being alone, so it's not too bad. Um, but if you're someone that always needs people around you, someone that is, you know, uh, an, an extrovert, then it might burn you out a little quicker than someone like me. All right. Now feelings of depression and anxiety, and I don't mean just with coding or just with your job, but just uh, a general feeling of depression. And this can ver vary, uh, you know, it can go from being very, very mild where you just have a, a sense of, you know, feeling down a little bit. Uh, all the way to, you know, severe depression and anxiety where you actually need mental help and medication. Uh, there's a huge range, and if you already have issues with depression and anxiety, as I do, then it, this makes you much more prone to this um, as a, a burnout symptom. All right, now, even though it's called programmer or developer burnout, it can severely affect other parts of your life, okay? Especially your relationships with your spouse or your kids, your friends. You may go through mood swings and lash out at people. Now, these are extreme cases, but it is important to mention them, okay? I've actually gone through all of these at one point or another. All right, so let's talk about some of the causes of programmer burnout, what that looks like. So sitting in front of a computer screen, or in my case, six computer screens for, you know, eight, 10, 12 plus hours per day is not the healthiest thing in the world. You're literally staring at one spot for most of the day. Your mind and your vision isn't getting any other input and stimulation. Okay, and this can definitely be a factor in burning out. The next one is a huge factor, and that's the fact that our minds are being pushed to the limit for hours on end every day, uh, a lot of times with no breaks. 
So try to compare your mind to a muscle when lifting weights. You might be really strong and you can work out for, you know, one to two hours really well. Uh, but then you start to get really tired and your arms start to feel like jello and you can barely move. Um, never mind, you know, lift more weights. So we do this with our minds every day. So breaks are really important and I'm going to get to that soon. All right, now doing the same type of work day in and day out, uh, even if you love programming, you might end up at a job where you're doing very mundane tasks and writing, you know, similar code every day, using the same technologies, nothing new. This can suck the passion right out of you. It can make you feel trapped or stuck at your job, um, feel like you're never going to progress in your career. This can also lead to burnout. Uh, because it just it basically just stops that passion and that motivation. And again, I'm going to talk about things you can do to help this stuff in a few minutes. So again, as we saw in the last slide, feelings of isolation is actually a symptom of being burnt out, but it's also a cause. So not having that human interaction can really push someone over the edge and make them question if this is really what they want to do. Uh, of course, that depends on who you are and how much you care about being around other people. I'm actually fine being in a room all day by myself as long as I can, you know, be with my family after work. So without them to hang out with before and after work, I'd probably go insane. So your life outside of work really matters in this case. Uh, if you live alone and you're a programmer, I can imagine that that can get pretty damn lonely and that can cause issues for you. All right, so the last one is lack of exercise and sleep. So basically just being unhealthy, uh, not eating right could also fit in here. Your mind needs rest and your body needs exercise. Without those things, you're not going to be at your best and it makes you much more vulnerable to burnout. A healthy mind and body is, is much less prone to being burnt out. All right, so what can we do to prevent this burnout from happening okay like i said it's different for everyone this is my personal perspective mixed with some research um, so let's talk about some of these things now you want to keep things fresh okay to hold on to that passion and drive if you work with the same old technologies every day and you're not you're not feeding your brain things tend to get stale um, now i'm fully aware that you know you may have a job where your responsibilities don't really permit this they don't really permit you know changing things up um, you may have to do the same thing every day maybe you work for a firm that builds the exact same WordPress website for every client um, but remember you can do things on your own as well you can create your own projects you may not be getting paid for them but it, it can pay off in the long run because learning new things can get you a better job or a promotion and maybe you could start your own business so you want to always keep things fresh all right, another tip is to take breaks through the day. Uh, this is something that I did not do for years. I would sit in front of my screen for, you know, up to 10 hours straight, just taking a couple minutes here and there just to go to the bathroom or eat something. Now I try to stretch every hour or two, take a lunch break, go for a quick walk, uh, anything, anything not to be in the same position for 8 to 10 hours straight. And it, may, it might seem like a small step to take, but it, it does wonders. So you should be able to stretch, you know, and take a little one to two minute break at any job you have. If not, then I would say start looking for a new job because they don't want creative and passionate developers. They want slave workers. All right. That's just just my opinion. Now, this one is also tough if you work for a company where you don't have much flexibility. But if you can take a break from coding every few months, I would say, you know, about a week or so. If you have the money and time, go on a vacation. That's the best thing. That's the most refreshing thing to do. Uh, but I realize that's not viable for everybody. If not, just find something else you that you enjoy. Spend some time with your family. Um, and then, you know, if you don't want to take a complete 100% break from coding, then you know, spend an hour in the morning for just just messing around. Maybe learning some new technologies just for a, a, an hour or two in the morning. Uh, nothing serious. All right, so exercise and get enough sleep. This is very important. Like I said, a health, a healthy mind and body is much tougher to burn out. Uh, if you eat ramen noodles for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and you take a hundred steps a day and sleep three hours a night, you're you're going to be completely burnt out within a month. 
uh, and this goes way beyond just this topic. It's it's more about it's more than just programming and burnout. It's about your life and your health and your body. All right, be around other people. We've already stressed that this is an, an isolated job for the most part. So you know, if you're single, try and hang out with your friends more. Go out to bars, have some fun, enjoy your life. If you're not single, uh, if you have a significant other, spend some time with them. Work on your relationship. And of course, if you have kids, spend as much time with them as you can. Uh, my kids are, are, are my antidepressant. Many of you know that I have an autistic, nonverbal eight-year-old son. And even though he can't talk, he's the most in inspiring person in my life. He's always happy and smiling, uh, regardless of all the issues that he has. And he's just a lovable little guy. So he's, he's helped me become who I am today. All right, so what about the people that are already burnt out so here's some things that I can suggest to you so take some time off now you really can't fix this without taking any time off and it sucks because you probably do this for work and it's what puts food on your family's table um, hopefully you work for a good company where you get benefits and vacation time if so then use that that vacation time ASAP uh, the amount of time to take off varies dramatically from person to person. I've heard of people needing to take years off doing something else. Um, I don't think that's the norm. For me, it was about two weeks or so um, to get out of my biggest slump that I had. Uh, if you're taking a fun vacation and you're not coding at all, then you know a week can, can do wonders. You should also find something else that you really like. I actually just got a, a new DJ set up with uh, a Pioneer controller. Some of you guys may have seen it on Instagram. Uh, I used to spin records back in the day, house music, hip hop music. Uh, I'm getting back into that, although now it's all digital and I used to use vinyl, so that's, that's something that I need to learn. Um, but that's something that really interests me and that I like to do. You know, you, you might want to do something more physical, like a sport, uh, maybe you're into cars or something like that. Whatever it is that interests you, I'd suggest getting into, you know, doing something else for a little while. Now, when you do come back, make sure that you start off very slow. Don't jump into, you know, eight, ten hour days. Do one to two hours here and there and work your way back up. I'd also suggest trying something new. If you if you were burnt out writing JavaScript, maybe you should try Python or, or maybe something less common like Rust or Assembly. Um, you can find a, a new love for a different language or stack. Work with other databases. If you are a PHP MySQL developer, maybe try Node and MongoDB. Uh, another thing you can do is change your environment. And I say outer and inner environment because changing your physical location, your, your outer environment may be good for you. Maybe a different room, uh, maybe even code outside on a laptop, which I find very relaxing. Um, and then your inner environment, I mean the tools you use. So if you're a Windows guy, maybe try to move to a Mac or Linux. Uh, maybe use a different text editor. Start to get that passion back for learning new things. All right, guys, so that's going to do it. Uh, I really hope that this video helped at least some of you, whether it helps you prevent burnout in, for the future or it helps you get out of a slump that you're in now. Uh, I hope to cover more about this in the future because it is something that's really important. It's something that is very, very common but not really talked about. All right, so thanks, guys. Thanks for watching. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe, and I will see you next time. So I just want to give another shout out to MailTag who sponsored this video. MailTag is a free Chrome browser extension that allows you to track your emails in real time. I've been using it myself for about a week now and I can't recommend it enough. On top of email tracking, MailTag has a bunch of other features like desktop push notifications that alert you when your emails have been opened, link click tracking that shows if people have actually clicked on the links in your email, and a ton of other cool features. Again, all these features are completely free. Be sure to check out MailTag and click that link in the description.